Hi guys, um, uh, it's, it's Friday, tips with Fens um, from FTP Training Headquarters here uh, down in Nara, the Watts Factory. Okay, um, last week we looked at threshold power and what was threshold power. Um, uh, you know, we, at FTP Training we try to do most of our coaching using power meters because we have found that it really is the optimal way to get um, the best performance from our athletes and be able to quantify their training load and their improvements over time. But for everybody that isn't necessarily, um, you know, not everybody can um, afford sometimes to get a power meter. So if we're still using heart rate, how does that correlate to threshold power? Threshold power and threshold heart rates do not run consecutively together. Um, so, um, uh, you know, a lot of training programs you may find out there may be run off of max heart rate. Um, we tend to run our programs off a threshold heart rate because over time, threshold heart rate doesn't generally change very much. However, maximum heart rate can. And as you get fitter and fitter, your maximum heart rate becomes harder and harder to get to. So often what happens is if someone um, believes they've got a maximum heart rate of 190 beats per minute and, and the program asks them to, to do a session which gets to 90% of that, but their actual maximum heart rate is, is now sort of 182 to 185 because they can't actually get to that level anymore. Um, that might be because they're carrying some fatigue or you know, they, they, may have, um, they may just be tired over time or they haven't slept properly. It means that people tend to go out there and try and push too hard. And, it, and we've seen it lots and lots of times. It can lead to overtraining and overreaching and generally poor performance. So we tend to set our programs based upon threshold heart rate. And threshold heart rate is the sustainable heart rate that we can sustain. We generally do this over a 20 minute um, climb or 20 minute effort. And then all of your training sessions are then based around a percentage of that threshold heart rate. So for instance, just to give some arbitrary figures, we may find that for instance, if we look at myself in particular, my maximum heart rate I see nowadays between about 182 to 184 beats per minute. I can threshold at about 172 beats per minute. Um, so therefore, at 172 beats per minute, if I was looking to do a 100% threshold effort, I would be at 172. If I was looking to do a VO2 effort, I would potentially look to increase my heart rate through the VO2 effort, so it was around 175, 178. At the end of a VO2, you may even reach nearly maximum heart rate, okay? If you're looking to do submaximal efforts, threshold heart rate can actually be a relatively good measure because unlike threshold power or power meters in themselves, power tends to be what we call very stochastic in nature, which means that as soon as you back off, the power drops. As soon as you put the power on, it spikes. And when you're going out and doing a, a, an endurance ride or a tempo ride or you're doing a ride over lumpy terrain, if, uh, if we've asked you to hold a specific power, it can be quite difficult to do. Therefore, if we ask you to hold a, a threshold heart rate, because heart rate is smooth, it doesn't respond so quickly, it stays a lot more constant. So for sub-maximal efforts, tempo efforts, endurance rides, threshold heart rate is actually quite a nice measure to follow because it stays very consistent and it's easy to hold. All right, so threshold heart rate, we generally consider to be um, what you can sustain, maximally what you can sustain as an average heart rate for 20 minutes, generally on a climb. Again, your training programs will be based around your threshold heart rate and percentages of that. All right, guys, I hope this has helped. Uh, I'll catch you out on the trail. Goodbye.